The Bible, across its many books, serves not only as a spiritual guide, but also as a mirror reflecting the harsh realities of the human condition. It candidly warns us about the evil and cold nature of the world, emphasizing the existence of treacherous individuals who, despite receiving kindness and generosity, may still betray trust and goodwill. This theme is prevalent throughout the scriptures, underscoring the complexity and often the painful truth about human nature and interactions. One fundamental aspect of this biblical perspective is the acknowledgement of innate human fallibility and propensity towards evil. From the narrative of Adam and Eve's fall in Genesis to the warnings in Proverbs and the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament, the Bible repeatedly highlights the human tendency towards sin and betrayal. This perspective stems from the theological view that mankind, since the original sin, is inherently flawed and in constant struggle with evil inclinations. Treacherous behavior, as portrayed in the Bible, often arises from a combination of greed, jealousy, pride, and selfishness. The story of Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, is a prime example. Despite being a close companion of Christ and a witness to his teachings and miracles, Judas succumbed to greed, leading to one of the most infamous acts of treachery in history. This narrative serves as a stark reminder that betrayal can come from those closest to us, and even good deeds and kindness cannot always change a treacherous heart. The world you live in still has treacherous individuals, people who will stab you in the back for no reason, when you are innocent and when you give them the world. When you do all that you can do for them, they still turn their back on you. That is the world we live in. That is the issue of sin. People are selfish. Some people just use other people. Some people are just cold-hearted, and to believe that everyone who smiles at you wants the best for you is to be naive. These are just cold, hard facts about this world. Proverbs 6 verses 24 to 27 is a passage of scripture that gives us a warning about the dangers of falling into the trap of a seductive person. And Delilah was indeed a seductive person. This advice applies to both men and women. Let's break it down in a simple way. Proverbs 6.24 To keep thee from the evil woman from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. This verse tells us that God's word and wisdom serve as a safeguard to protect us from falling into the temptations and deceptions of an immoral woman. Contrary to what society may often portray or what some individuals may believe, the scriptures make it clear that people are not inherently good. This understanding is crucial for us to navigate the complexities of life with discernment and wisdom. Furthermore, Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? The Bible understands human beings and human nature far better than we do. And this Bible states that the heart is not only deceitful, but also wicked and desperately so. Acknowledging the fallen nature of humanity allows us to approach relationships and interactions with a balanced perspective. It helps us avoid naivete and recognize that evil exists in people's hearts and actions. This awareness does not mean we should view others with constant suspicion or negativity, but rather it calls us to exercise discernment and wisdom in our interactions, seeking God's guidance and relying on His Word as our moral compass. Proverbs 6.25 Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Here we are warned not to allow our hearts to be captivated by the physical beauty of an immoral woman. In our modern society, this can apply to various situations where we are enticed by appearances, such as on social media or in other forms. It reminds us to focus on inner character and values rather than being swayed solely by external beauty. Proverbs 6.26 For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. This verse highlights the consequences of becoming involved with an immoral woman. It emphasizes that such relationships can lead to ruin and destruction, 
The woman of temptation uses her beauty and charm to make enticing promises to those who come to her. She offers excitement, pleasure, and attention, among other things, making it seem like she can bring something valuable into their lives. However, the truth is that she cannot fulfill those promises. Instead of giving, she takes away and leaves emptiness behind. And this is exactly what Delilah did to Samson, she took from him. In today's world, it serves as a warning against engaging in immoral and harmful relationships that can jeopardize our well-being and spiritual growth. Proverbs 6, 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? This verse draws a parallel between the consequences of engaging with an immoral woman and the destructive nature of fire. It reminds us that if we indulge in sinful relationships, we will inevitably face negative consequences it serves as a reminder to guard our hearts and avoid compromising situations that can lead to spiritual, emotional, and physical harm. In simple terms here, what Solomon is saying here is that you are playing with fire. There is no better example of this than the story of Samson and Delilah. Let's briefly go through the story of Samson and Delilah. It all begins with the angel of the Lord announcing the birth of Samson. Samson is not an ordinary man. His birth was special and divinely foretold to his parents as we can read in Judges 13.3. Judges 13.3 And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. Samson shares this unique honor with other notable individuals like Isaac, Samuel, John the Baptist, and Jesus. This highlights the significance of his birth and the incredible potential his life held. From the moment of his birth, Samson was dedicated as a Nazarite, which means he was set apart for God. As a Nazarite, there were certain rules he had to follow. He couldn't drink wine or consume any products made from grapes. He also had to stay away from dead bodies, whether human or animal. Additionally, he was not allowed to cut his hair. These rules were part of his special dedication to serving God. As we immerse ourselves in this narrative, we witness the destructive consequences that arise when we allow our desires to blind us to the truth. The story begins with Delilah, a woman who captivated Samson's heart. Delilah appeared to be a beautiful and alluring figure in Samson's life, but little did he know the darkness that receded within her. Time and again, Delilah showed her true colors. She was not interested in Samson's love or well-being, but rather in exploiting his weaknesses for personal gain. She cunningly approached him, seeking to discover the secret of his strength. Delilah's actions were marked by manipulation, persistence, and a relentless pursuit of her own agenda. Judges 16 verses 6 to 12. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound to afflict you. And Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, and she bound him with them. Now men were lying in wait, staying with her in the room. And she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he broke the bowstrings as a strand of yarn breaks when it touches fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, Look, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now, please tell me what you may be bound with. So he said to her, if they bind me securely with new ropes that have never been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Therefore, Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson, and men were lying in wait, staying in the room. But he broke them off his arms like a thread. This happened for a third time also, and her attempt failed once again. In Delilah's last-ditch effort, she manipulated Samson by saying, How can you say, I love you, when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. And because Samson was stuck in lust, 
or love or emotion or whatever it was, he finally told her the truth after. She had betrayed him three times already. He said, No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazirite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Now I want to highlight how evil Delilah was, and how she only had love for one thing, and that was money. Delilah called the lords of the Philistines to come to her with her money in their hands. And the Bible says in verse 19, Then she lulled him to sleep on her knees, and called for a man, and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. We cannot overlook the fact that Delilah displayed red flags, warning signs that should have alerted Samson to the danger she posed. But alas, his desires clouded his judgment, and he remained oblivious to the truth. Samson's intense lust for Delilah blinded him from the reality of her deceitful intentions. This is the nature of lust. It will blind you into entering into situations that you should not enter. Lust will show you all the good a person does, but blind you to the murder and evil in their hearts. Lust had put Samson into a place where he could not think rationally. Anyone could have told him that Delilah was making a fool out of him, but Samson would have not believed no one. Lust will cloud your judgment. Lust will destroy you. Lust will break your home up. Lust will destroy your health. Lust will take your money away. Lust will rob you of your joy. Lust will put a wall between you and God. Lust will throw you into a hole deeper than you ever thought you could go. Lust will leave you in a place where you will wonder, how did I get here? I say all this because I have seen it firsthand with my own eyes. Lust do this to people. And the story of Solomon is a cautionary tale for both men and women of how lust can destroy one's life. I have seen lust cause two people who had no intention of being with one another have to bring up a child together because of lust. I have seen people stay in relationships that were not leading to marriage for decades because of lust. Let's be honest, lust will make you contact people that you have no business contacting. Lust clouds your mind and judgment. Your ability to make good decisions goes out the window when lust is involved. When you have lust on your mind, your reasoning skill and your decision making is poor. Lust makes you not responsible. It is like a drug. When people are high on drugs, they are not as responsible as they would be with a sober mind. And we see this in the life of Samson, if he had only listened to the word of God. 2 Timothy 2 verse 22 Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Lust will make a man forfeit and destroy a 20-year marriage for 10 minutes of pleasure. Isn't it really foolish for a man who has built a 20-year marriage to forfeit his wife and children and begin to pursue a girl for 10 minutes of pleasure? What is the wisdom behind a man leaving his wife behind to pursue another man's wife? Lust blindfolds a man and robs him of his wisdom and strength. And one of the biggest lies you will hear is that lust is a male-only problem. No, it is not. Women struggle with it just as much as men. As the story unfolds, we witness Delilah's repeated attempts to extract the secret of Samson's strength. Each time, Samson falsely revealed the source of his power, only to find himself weakened but still underestimating Delilah's treachery. He was trapped in a web of deception spun by the very person he thought he loved. And treachery is one of the worst sins out there. Delilah was a treacherous woman. A lot of people do not know what a treacherous person is, allow me to define it. A treacherous person is someone who betrays the trust and loyalty of others. They are characterized by deceit, disloyalty, and acts of betrayal. Such individuals may engage in dishonest or harmful actions, often for their own personal gain or to the detriment of others. Treachery involves breaking promises, backstabbing, or undermining the well-being of those who have placed their trust in them. 
It is a term used to describe someone who exhibits untrustworthy and deceitful behavior, causing harm or distress to others. The world we live in today still has deceitful women, just like Delilah. They are treacherous individuals who betray trust. Treacherous individuals who will send you to your grave and not hesitate one bit. Treacherous individuals who will take everything from you and sleep peacefully at night. However, it's important to note that treachery is not exclusive to women. There are also deceitful men in our world. This is a part of the human condition and the corrupt nature of humanity. If you have a spouse or a person whom you can trust completely, that person is more valuable than any amount of money or gold. Loyalty is something that cannot be purchased. Finding someone who has integrity is rare. And if you're someone who is loyal, honorable, and committed, cherish them. When we talk about godly women, we mean women who have godly characteristics and live according to God's teachings. They are women who seek wisdom and follow the path of righteousness. They have a deep understanding of God's ways and live in alignment with His will. In the world today, there are still many wonderful godly women who possess these qualities. They are like precious gems that shine brightly in their actions and words. They bring goodness and blessings to those around them. These women are wise, kind, loving, and have a deep faith in God. So, remember that God is still producing amazing godly women in the world today. They are like precious gems, shining with wisdom and goodness. In conclusion, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that Samson's birth was divinely foretold to his parents by the angel of the Lord. It was a remarkable event for an angel to announce the birth of a person. However, despite this extraordinary beginning, Samson's life ended in disaster and ruin due to the choices he made. This serves as a reminder that even individuals who seem exceptional can be ensnared by the temptations of lust. The annals of his story are filled with stories of men and women whose lives have been destroyed because they were blinded by the allures of lust. It is a trap that can captivate even the most seemingly strong and wise individuals. Many people find themselves in this predicament and often try to shift the blame onto God for the choices they made. However, it is important to recognize that choices have consequences. In Samson's story, there were numerous red flags and warning signs that should have alerted him to the dangers of indulging in lustful desires, yet he chose to ignore them and suffered the repercussions. This serves as a lesson for all of us to be mindful of the warning signs and to make wise choices that align with God's will. It is essential to take responsibility for our actions and not place the blame on external factors. Blaming God for the consequences of our own choices is a futile exercise. Instead, we should focus on learning from our mistakes, seeking forgiveness and seeking God's guidance in making better choices moving forward.